In this video, we'll be taking a look at ADA Colorbox. You can use that to shade sources that does not inherently have an API for being shaded. So if you have something which is not a camera or if you have a camera without any data connection to it, you would need something like ADA Colorbox to actually shade it. It looks like this in the UI. It's a nice little black box that has an SDI in, SDI out, a pass through and so on. And it has a very, very powerful set of color correction. Uh, features. It has ADA color, which is a seven stage pipeline. We'll start looking at that. Then it has color front, which is um, something else. Uh, we have Orion Convert, BBC Lots, and NBC Lots. All of this can be shaded from the wonderful Skahoy RCPs. This is RCP Pro. This is RCP Mini out in 2024. And it is designed for simplified workflow and also uh, small spaces. As you can see, this is one uh, two thirds of the, the width of this one. So you can fit in six of these where you would normally have four of those. So one guy can now do more. No excuses. <laughs> and that's uh, that's really exciting product that we are bringing out here. Both of them are featuring the uh, high-end RCP joystick. Unfortunately, with AJA Colorbox, that is because these are designed to, to actually shade lenses with a ring for Master Black and also uh, iris control on the lens and also joystick override when you push the joystick. It, it can be used with Colorbox, but it's not the focus of this video. And this is kind of why I also brought in a rec unit, because some of these uh, things that we want to do might actually be done just as well on, on some of the Skahoy products that does uh, have a bunch of encoders and some buttons to navigate menus. So the um, if, if we look at the RCP Pro here, yeah, actually, we need to set it up first, because the RCP Pro, as it stands, is... It's going to be the brain of this video. And that is currently just out of the box, connected to our network. We are in the web GUI of this one. And uh, it looks like this. So basically, the first thing we want to do is to uh, search up our color box here. And um, we find it right there. So we uh, type in the IP address of the device. And that's it. We would be connected more or less immediately here. Since we have multiple devices that the RCP Pro is going to um, or can control, then we also need to select it over here. And immediately, it's now on the RCP Pro. So you see uh, menu navigation up here. We have encoders for uh, working with the parameters. And we'll go through that in a moment. But I also want to just quickly add the RCP Mini on the side so it's not completely blank. And uh, we can discover panels. So just like we could discover devices, some devices on the network, in this case, not the color box because um, we have no auto discovery for that. But panels, you can see the RCP Mini Pro right here. So we'll select this panel. And, um, and basically for this one as well, we need to tell it that we want to shade this one. Now, guess what? If you want to shade multiple color boxes, you just add more devices here, okay? So we could we could even like duplicate this one. And then if we had a second color box on, on a different IP, which, which we don't, then uh, we'll just do it like that. It will now be missing an IP, but we could still potentially add it in here as a second camera, if you will. If you want to uh, adjust the titles, that would be useful. Then you can go into the camera selector and give it a name like color box number one and color box number two. And then let's exit this one. We will see uh, if, if we hold down shift and we use the camera selector up here, we are basically changing between color box one and color box two. Now color box two is unconnected. That's shown here. So it's just for you to understand that if we actually had it, we would be able to uh, select it like that. So uh, we all set up on the RCP Mini. It's the same. You hold down the shift key. You select the, the product you want to shade. And uh, it's currently the color box. If we want to also give that a name, we should go over here. And then we quickly just need to exercise the camera selectors to have the name in the display. All right. We all set up to work with these and explore how the color box can be um, navigated here. Now, um, we are... Uh, we can go into the mode here. If we are on the RCP Pro, then uh, we basically need to select which stage do we want to edit. So we have these seven stages here. And uh, some of them can be edited by the um, by the um, RCP Pro. And we'll select stage number one. So now that we're in stage number one, you see the menu ex is expanded by having gain and gamma and black. So these parameters are available there. Over here, we also have them on these. All right, so now we, we could actually just bring up gamma gain on these six encoders and on these, these six encoders on these two units. And uh, let's and, and we have them in the web UI. So you can follow along as I'm uh, rotating the encoders here. Um, ah, let me see. 
no, I was on the wrong one. I was on stage three. You need to keep focused here. But uh, stage number one is enabled. And uh, as I'm turning this knob, you can see it's it's actually reflected both places. So it doesn't matter if I use it the one or the other place. And you also see how the video is responding to this. Maybe a little bit course changes. So if you press it, then the encoders can be um, changed between different like uh, we have something called course and fine mode. There's a small icon in the displays, and if the icon shows, it means you're on course mode, and it will take greater steps. Right now, I feel like, um, yeah, I want to go back. So what I did just there was holding down the encoders, and it's going to reset to the reset values. But as you can see, it does work as expected. So I just want to change some values so you can see the response of it. Let's go over to black. It's the same thing here for black, so we can change black values, and you see all the... Uh, parameters are changing the UI. If we move on to the to the program, it is currently disabled. So I want to enable this one and you go to um, basically, yeah, I think you go to mode here because no, that is not true. You go to home on the RCP Pro. Here you can see all the stages that are turned on and off. So if I turn this one on, if I turn the next one on, the next one on and so on, then you see that I, I'm enabling all the stages right now. If you go into mode, you can now pick what mode does each of these stages offer. And you see this one is ProCamp. So with ProCamp, I would have gain. And this is where we are right now. So let's just say that we select stage number two for editing. We are now programmed here and we have those four parameters we are seeing. So I can adjust that. Can I not? Yes, I can. All right. So go, going back to home here, it's slightly different on the RCP Mini where we have less encoders. So we have uh, we, we need to select the stage. And in this case, we want to go to stage number two. So let's just go to stage two. It is on, it is programmed, and we have access to the program parameters here. So that's the same as over here. So you see, because of the different size of the two, we can do the same things. It's just arranged differently in the menu. And uh, that is, by the way, if you know our products, we call this standard class. Standard class is uh, it's kind of internal word, but it is saying that we have made a configuration that is dealing with like four encoders. Four encoders like you would have on, on this rack unit here, or four encoders as you would have on, let me show you. Uh, well, first of all, the, the color fly, which we will cover in a different video, but also this one, which is inline 22. And that product is like a color fly without faders and might be really cool for your projects with color box because of it's not having faders for a lens that you don't own anyway. And, and that is standard class configuration. So all the arrangement of things would be the same on that one. Slightly different here on the RCP Pro because it has what we call Pro class. And Pro class means you have eight encoders. That gives us some different possibilities in how we arrange things. So, okay, um, we have looked at program. We have this one as well. and and. I think you can imagine that we would be able to, to basically um, adjust the same things. Maybe we go to the 3D Lodge here. So if we go to home and uh, yeah, it's all enabled. Um, the modes are also in place. Did, did we? No, we did not change mode. Okay, let's go back to stage two because if I wanted to change the program mode here, I can actually do it. And you see um, there's a little question mark popping up on the screen. That means, and this is all the lots that I have dynamic and then the lot names and so on. Now, if I pick this one, MX9 for that one, you see that immediately it kind of, it, it selects matrix and it also picks number nine. If I go to dynamic, you see it's going to update to dynamic up here. So either way, you can choose either to go by the RCP or you can go in the UI and you'll have the same. So now we just change that over here and then back to program, please. Yes. All right. And actually the menus will adjust accordingly. So if you see, if I go here, then you'll, you'll see that in our um, yeah, program settings, we are not allowed to work on these. But if I go back and I enter into program again, then they become available. There's not that forbidden sign associated with it. Um, yeah, so that's basically, you can adjust all parameters in this uh, workflow. There's also a few things down here that I could just go back to, which is the, the frame store and also the bypass parameters. And uh, the bypass user is actually turned on and off on this button here. So um, that's that's easy. You have the uh, frame store on off on this button and you have also an overlay out here on this side. So let's just try this overlay. I can turn that on and off as well. Okay, those things uh, are also, I think, available over here. Let's see, we, um, yeah, if we go into the menu, uh, you see in this menu, you have the uh, bypass option on off, frame store on off, overlay on off, um, yes, on this one. 
And now comes, how can I change the mode over to Colorfront instead? Well, uh, you can use this four-way button. Uh, if you, if you uh, go by the sides on this one, you can see you're browsing forth and back between the options. And when you choose a different option, you need to uh, apply it. So let's go to Colorfront and then you confirm by pressing the lower edge. And now it's updating the engine right here. In the Colorfront workflow, um, we can enable, disable this one. And uh, okay, now actually, I think this one would be enable, disable, right? And then recently in the 2.0 firmware of Colorbox, they put in an advanced uh, or quite an extension of what you find inside of, of, of Colorfront here. So uh, let's just check out. Okay, let's click it. So we get over here. You have two modes, TV and live. And these are all the parameters you have for TV. Okay, we are already in the TV mode. We can change it over to live, as you can see. So going forth and back is done by the RCP easily here. Now let's uh, check out. But you, you see, by the way, that the RCPs are, are responding to how Colorbox is set up. So as we changed over to Colorfront, the RCP Mini also responds to that. So there we have things divided into main one, main two, gamma gain, and there's even additional pages with black, miscellaneous, miscellaneous two, and back to the menu where you have like the, the, the main features that you want to change or can change. Okay, so let's go to gamma, for instance. Uh, now, in this case, uh, gamma and, um, because we have like four parameters here, they, they're on the pro version. You have gamma and gain on the same. Here we have to have it split out into two different uh, menus, as you can see. Let's move on from the uh, color front into the Orion Convert. We have currently the Orion Convert is off. I can turn it on here. We can click it so that we see things over here. So a nice little condensed collection of things we can change. And we have basically two menus, so not too much. And over here, it is distributed like this on the different um, pages. We have changed into the BBC lots now. Before the BBC lots, we have a color corrector, we have a program sitting, then we have all the lots that we can select, and we have overlay here in the end. So how is that on the RCPs? Well, we uh, have um, the gamma gain uh, settings here and uh, black, and that is if you go to the home screen, you will see that many of the things, um, let me see, if we if we go to the, uh, this is actually the program. They that is put into these displays. So if we go to the program where we are right now, I can change these values, and you see that reflected in the UI over here. We have the program in this menu, same values that we can change. All right, so that's easy. The um, color corrector for red, green, blue is now put into these two different menus, which you also find over here. So just let's go here. By the way, here you actually see that the. RCP Mini is uh, so somewhere in between what we call standard class and pro class. We call it tri-class, and it is actually possible for us to use all six encoders and not just four at a time. So that's what we're doing here, where we have red, green, blue, and just that. So it makes sense that it's distributed like you see it uh, in this case, just like on the RCP Pro. So let's just try this out a little bit and see if these values are changeable. That works out well across these two units. Nice. Okay, so if we, um, I mean, if you want to turn the lots on anyway, then we would go, go to the home screen here. And uh, there's a uh, lot enabled, so we'll just enable that. And then if you want to select the lots, uh, it's possible, again, you can scroll through here on different and then confirm by pressing. And uh, the same, of course, can be done on the parameter on the RCP Mini. That's super easy. Uh, NBC uh, <clears throat> U lots are more or less the same. So if we change over to that pipeline, here we'll see um, more or less similar kind of parameters that are available for us. I wanna end this video by showing how we can add more panels that could be used to control the uh, color box because I think there are many different workflows you can imagine. Let's say you want to mix color boxes with other types of cameras. You could actually find a PDC camera so let's take a Canon PDC camera. Not that it really needs a shading with, no, actually, yeah. My, my whole point is that we could add a camera that could be shaded directly. And as we now have that in our device list, we can also add it over here. And that means if I select it as camera number three, although I'm not connected, you still see that it pops up on the RCP Pro. I can do the same on the Mini as well, as you can see. So for the RCPs, that makes a lot of sense. But what if we have, um, we, we want to have multiple color boxes shaded in this way. We could actually uh, search up a panel like the uh, Rec Fusion 2. We actually call it Rec Control Uno. 
And this is why I have the darkroomskyhoy.com website because on this one you can scroll all our wonderful controllers and you can even see for some of these which applications exist for them. For instance, you could go to the RCP Pro and if you go to the RCP Pro and uh, scroll down the list, you see how there are configurations for ARRI, for bird dog cameras, uh, Canon CIN 500. I mean, there are many more configurations than you see here. It's just those that we actually have documented with screenshots or with the um, pictures of the uh, controllers and how they operate them. But if you search Rack Control, there are like two products. The Rack Control Duo, which is a two rack unit device with 12 encoders. And there's also the Rack Control Uno that uh, we saw a moment ago. And that is the one that I have connected right now. So it looks like this. And um, actually here you see an example based on color box where this would be an example of having five color boxes. And then for each of these, there are presets you can recall, something we have not shown in this video today. This, this is the menu. And finally, you have the encoders you can use to adjust it. So let's see how that would actually work if we add it. It's already here. I'll just add it real quick by um, basically picking these. I think sometimes the icons doesn't come along. Okay. And no icons come along today. Which, ah, it's for audio. Okay, Casper, you need to select, because Rack Control Uno is, uh, it can be used for routing and other audio and other things. So like your base configuration needs to be chosen to be camera control. So that's, that was my mistake. I'll hold down shift and just click these because that gives you a chance to add multiple devices at a time. And if we go into the simulator, which is a tool inherent on all uh, our blue pill products, you see this menu here. If we just take this into the view, you can see that if I, I can also select it uh, right here and it falls along by the way in, in that simulator. So we already have this kind of control inside of our simulator. Uh, we see this is uh, all in place. I can change around in the menus. And uh, oh wait, we are now on the um, on the Canon camera. Let's just pick color box because uh, whoop. after all, that is the theme of today's video. And uh, let's pick home or the menu settings. Let's okay, home. Yeah, no menu. Yes, all right. So uh, here you see menu settings for a color box we are not connected to. All right, Casper, I, I'm just going to pick the first color box once again. No. Uh, there we go. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about the confusion. But uh, this is actually what I see on the panel. So if I press buttons on the panel, you would see that same change that is uh, happening in front of you right now. So um, that is that is super cool. And then the final product that I mentioned that could be really cool would be uh, a inline 22. This product, adding it just from our database here, it would be the same and we can explore it using our simulation tool if we want to. So inline 22 would look like this. Of course, you can again simulate everything inside of this one on basically navigate it as if it was a real panel. And that is actually happening uh, on, on the uh, product. Let's just quickly go over to the first one here. And where are we? We are in the program somewhere. Yes. So uh, oh, which editing stage is it? Let me see. On the first one, we are on the gamma. Uh, this is my selecting the stages. I And there we go. So now we can see it on the RCP Pro, changing values here, changing them here. It's all the same. Why? Because this RCP Pro being the host of controlling the RCP Mini, the Rack Control Uno and the Inline 22 is all talking to the color box with a single connection and orchestrating all this control experience. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you will subscribe to our channel if you're not already and follow us on social media because we have a lot on our hearts that we want to tell you about how Skahoe equipment can enhance your control experience in broadcast and AV live production.